Okay, you are supposed to see that I have pajama sweatpants on, but welcome back to my channel. This is my first sit down Q&A video ever. And Mater's a little confused why I have up the living room all rearranged. I have this camera sitting on a coffee cup on a pile of books because I couldn't get the right angle. I thought it was only fitting to just do an overall Q&A. Um, never done one before, not really even on TikTok. And I asked you guys on Instagram to give me some questions. I posted a TikTok today where I went to get coffee and it was removed for violating community guidelines. I think it's because I was driving. Only have the questions from my Instagram story. Not gonna waste a bunch of time yapping. Um, let's just get right into the questions. Let's start off with something like light and fun. The first question is, what's your favorite clothing item you've ever sold at Savvy? Okay, this is hard. There's definitely been a couple, but I have a couple outfits that are the first to, first to pop into my head and it's actually from the same collection a year ago, I wanna say. Sorry if you can hear him licking. Um, so the first is Maybell jeans with our USA tank. And then also from that collection, we had, I forget what this dress is called, but it's like a tiered, colorful, strapless dress. I'm a strapless girl through and through. And then we had a different version of that exact dress in the Kentucky Derby collection. And we're actually gonna have it come back sometime this summer and it's blue and white um, flowers. So I would say those are what first pops into my head, but I feel like I forget. So I don't know, maybe let me know what your favorite items are because I feel like I just forget, but those are the first that pop in my head. What are some big goals slash aspirations you have for your boutique? Um, wow, this one is, well, first off, I would love to complete the 50 state series. This is going to be something I feel like I look back on and I will never forget like this chapter of my life doing the 50 states. Um, I'm trying to keep a little memento so I can like look back and really like take it all in. Um, but I want to keep putting all my effort creatively into giving you guys outfit ideas and giving you guys clothes that I love. Um, my goals aren't really centered around like money, money, money. Like I think I would be like, I don't even think my dream would be to have some huge warehouse with like tons and tons of employees. If I could like live comfortably, be creative and like keep running my business, that's kind of my dream. Um, when I kind of enter a different phase of my life, like this is a little further out into the future, but like when I have kids, I do think I want to start designing. Um, so whether I, I'm still in like a boutique space or I start like my own label, um, but that's, a pretty far ways away because I would pretty much start with like nothing. I'm just myself and I have a lot to learn before I want to do that because I want to do it right. So the boutique is not going anywhere anytime soon, but I feel like in a different phase of my life, I want to design. So that's ultimately my dream, but right now I'm just focusing on being creative as I can and bringing you guys clothes that I love. Do you have a specific budget for your business slash savings plan that you stick to? This is hard because yes and no. I have a ballpark that I like my Airbnbs that I stay in for the 50 states to be in. I have a nightly goal on a launch night that I like to hit. But other than that, I try not to think too hard about it. However, I get a lot of questions about is 50 states profitable? It definitely is profitable or else I would not be able to do it. That would be a lot. Um, right now, I put all my effort into making like the best collection I possibly can and then I pay myself what I'm comfortable with how that collection did. Um, I don't make myself be paid a certain number. I would rather put as much as I can to the photo shoots. However, in the pit stops definitely is helping like travel expenses for sure. Um, but yes, I do have a ballpark number for Airbnbs. Like, okay, I guess I'll give an example. It's crazy when I say it out loud, but I kind of like my trips to be right at 2000. Um, that sounds kind of crazy when I say it like that, but it's marketing. The value is brought by the travel, so you do have to spend money to make money. However, I like to stay around the $2,000 range. Sometimes I can get it lower, like Georgia. I was very, very under that until the weather kind of screwed up my plans, then I had to double it. Um, 
For example, I think for a two night stay in Tybee Island it was $700. So I was like, wow, we're getting off like scot-free because we also drove there. But it ended up being $1,400. So, but it was still under my budget and we did a pop-up shop. So I was like, whatever. When are you coming to Montana? So I have a lot of questions that are like, when are you coming here? When are you coming there? Montana, I do want to be a good one because I do want my boyfriend to be able to go on that one. So that one will hopefully be maybe three or four days so we could really enjoy Montana and I can get my work stuff done because that's somewhere he really, really wants to go. So if you have any recommendations on Montana, obviously I have to do a very like, I don't know if Western's the right word, but maybe like fall clothes I'm picturing in Montana. I, I think fall or maybe even winter. Um, I would have to do more research on Montana. I, I just know that I do want my boyfriend to be able to go on that one. So what's your favorite collection you've done so far? So I'm going to answer this in a 50 states way. Um, so South Carolina was up there. Kentucky was up there. Georgia's music video was really fun. Michigan was cool because I liked that I did like fun makeup and hair. That is so hard for me to answer because I feel like I like them each the best in different ways. Like 100% Kentucky is my most successful collection of all time. Like I've never had numbers like that. The Georgia music video just made me feel like super inspired. Um, if I ever felt like the boutique thing wasn't going to work out for me, I really do feel like I would be interested in doing some kind of creative direction, whether it was photography or like video. I don't know. This whole thing has made me like wish I could like direct music videos. <laughs> I am not qualified to direct music videos, but I definitely have a passion for like coming up with an idea of something. Um, I'm honestly probably going to say Kentucky, but... I love a lot of them for different things. What's your most anticipated state to travel to and what state are you most excited to go to? Obviously, I have wanted to go to Hawaii forever. Um, I was that kid that was like obsessed with Lilo and Stitch. I was obsessed with Bethany Hamilton. I was obsessed with Blue Crush. And whenever people tell me that I look like the girl from Blue Crush, it is the biggest compliment of my life. Last time I went to market, one of the security ladies stopped me and was like, I thought you were, um, I forget her name all the time, but the girl from Blue Crush, and it's one of my favorite compliments ever. Hawaii is going to be our 50th state. It's going to be the grand finale. Hopefully I can have a lot of my family come and we can maybe spend like a week there. Uh, so I'm hoping that is going to be our finale, but as of right now, especially because it makes the most sense because Hawaii is like the same all year long. So even if we finish this series in December, Hawaii is got the same climate all year, I'm fairly certain. So that's probably my most anticipated, but I feel like that's a really obvious answer. So let me think of like a second favorite. I do think I am excited to go to like, I've never been to a part of the country that has like red rock and like desert. So I would have to say, is it Utah? Oh, Arizona, certain spots in Nevada. I think I am really excited to do like a red rock desert vibe. Obviously, Hawaii is pretty up there for me personally. How long do you think it will take you to finish all 50 states? This is a great question because um, this is probably going to take me three or four years. I believe North Carolina, South Carolina. Um, I've done seven which means I have about 42 left. It's gonna take me another like three, three and a half years. A lot of people are like, if you come here, you can double up here, but like, I'm not exactly in a rush to finish it per se, but it is probably gonna take me like another three and a half years. Um, over summer, if my sister is like out of school and we can do double states in a couple months, um, we'll do it, but I'm not in a rush, however, I do think it would be nice to maybe finish the series before I had kids and transition to another phase of my life. I don't like thinking out that far ahead, but I kind of do because like I'm 25. Um, it's inevitable that's so far. Well, again, it's not that far out in the future, but I do think I would love to complete this series 
it would almost be kind of like symbolic for me i feel like to like really finish something of my own that i've like worked hard on and then move on into that phase but yeah we wouldn't be done until like 2027 the end of 2027 probably my sister just texted me how are you gonna get a kayak to my mom's house because tomorrow's mother's day i'm filming this on saturday and by the time my mom watches this video, she'll have already gotten a kayak. But it's a fold of my sister's not realizing it's a foldable kayak. Like I can put it in my car. It's not like a one I have to throw on the roof. Let me tell her. I'm also thinking about getting a paddleboard because I live on the Gulf and you can take your paddleboard out in the ocean. And some of our friends saw like manatees last weekend and I and I'm like, I really wanna get a freaking paddleboard i'm more of a paddleboard person than a kayak person okay we're getting we're getting ahead of ourselves okay jackie said favorite part of the 50 states photo shoots endless inspiration and ideas for me i love planning i love coming up with ideas i love research that's also another part of it i do like to research i like new experiences and i've touched on this before but i definitely am somebody that struggles with anxiety pretty heavily um, to the point where I was never agoraphobic. Agoraphobic means you're kind of like scared to leave your house, but I can find myself at times getting into that headspace where I'm scared to leave. Like if I'm ever having a rough couple weeks, like this month has kind of been tough with my anxiety. I've had a couple things here and there that catch me off guard. Like, why am I so worried about that? Like, why am I having such panic? Like, cause I have a long drive home. Um, and I do think this is like my own form of exposure therapy. So I also love it in that way, but that's also why I like to experience it with my family. I'm, I feel safe with my sister and my mom. They know the right things to say. My boyfriend too, obviously, but my boyfriend's not able to go on a lot of the 50 states. Cause a lot of times we go during the weekdays cause it's cheaper and he works full time. So we have a list of like states that he definitely wants to go to. And hopefully eventually we'll have somebody that can walk my dog and we can go out of town. I've never talked about this, but my dog definitely struggles with like anxiety and reactivity and he struggles with other dogs. So we can't put him in a kennel. So pretty much one of us has to stay home. Like I'm home and my boyfriend's at Disney because we can't leave the dog and we don't really trust anybody to be careful with him because we don't want him to get out and like, who knows if he got in contact with somebody else's dog. We don't want anything to happen. So he lives in our little world and hopefully we'll get a house soon with a fence and we can just have friends come and watch him at our house. But as of right now, we're kind of like stuck taking turns. Um, but like I said, the 50 states has a long way to go. So there will be states that he joins us on. But yeah, I, I do think this series is helping my anxiety and overcoming and pushing through and getting myself out of my comfort zone tremendously. There are times, and maybe with the YouTube journey, I'll talk more about them, but Kentucky, I had to like take like 20 minutes to like gather myself because I was just feeling a little like faintish and this and that. And maybe I'll film more of that if you guys are interested in seeing it, but I just kind of feel whiny talking about it, but I do struggle and I do have to push through a lot of like hard moments I let get into my head. Advice on getting over the awkwardness slash fear of filming slash posting content. That's a great question because if you know me personally or if you went to school with me or whatnot, I'm extremely, extremely quiet and shy and nervous. I'm an extremely nervous person. For some reason, I've never been camera shy. Um, my dad and my mom think it's the strangest thing that I can just talk to a camera, but in certain like social situations, I'm very, very timid. I don't know what that is. I just think it's a creative outlet for me. And I think if you're posting or you're working on something you truly are passionate about, I think it'll come out a lot more natural. I still struggle with types of content I wanna post because sometimes I do wanna be very, aesthetically pleasing and this and that, but I'm also very like erratic at the same time. So that's why I try to keep my vlogs just more productive all over the place. Like I find that if I'm proud of a video, I'm not insecure about posting that video, if that makes sense. Um, but I do do all my voiceovers in the closet so my boyfriend can't hear me. He watches them, like I don't care obviously, 
sometimes I have to just get over it if I can hear myself coming from his phone. Like sometimes for anybody. Okay, that's a little embarrassing. Like we were at one of his work friends houses and he just started going through all my TikToks. That was like my biggest nightmare ever. But I'm like, just get over yourself. You're posting them, people are seeing them, be proud of them. Um, it just takes practice. Um, but give yourself an environment to make it easier. So like do it when no one else is home, but like make something that you're proud of. If you like want to delete it, maybe that's not your type of video to make. It's not me being me. That's when I'm insecure and I want to delete it. That's my advice on that. This question is so funny to me, but I got a question that said, would you say you're introverted or extroverted? I'm extremely introverted. I would say I'm a, I'm a very Im ambitious introvert. Like I've never been afraid to go somewhere far or try new things. However nervous I may be, um, I'm still not afraid to do it. Middle school, I like wanted to go to a sleepaway camp, but I was so nervous that my dad will tell you I was talking in a British accent um, for like the whole 24 hours leading up to camp because it was just like my nerves coming out. I love working from home. I love being by myself. I think working sometimes with other people is harder. Uh, another reason why I don't have any employees except my sister who's coming and helping me this weekend Hopefully we can make a lot of videos and you guys can get to know her. I love being home. I'm a homebody another reason why the 50 state series is good for me because I Could never leave my house and be like so happy. I do like to spend time outside But I'm like I have a very small circle and most of the people in my circle. I am related to um, I find my cousins are like my best friends and I have certain friends I stay in touch with. I've met some people through social media that I really love, um, but I keep a very tight knit. I'm not social really. I'm most definitely an introvert. I think when I told my hairdresser, my hairdresser saw one of my videos where I'm like uh, talking about anxiety and she's like, I would have never guessed that. So I do feel like maybe I hide it well or maybe it doesn't come across, which I guess that's good. Um, but I'm highly, highly, anxious i'm highly highly nervous i'm highly highly panic attacky overthinker but i've always been ambitious like i've lived in sweden and new zealand for a year and i don't know why i don't know how that makes any sense at all what's been your favorite part about planning the 50 states the planning is truly a passion for me um, which is why I'm excited to have somebody help me pack orders so I can put even more effort to planning because I think that's where my exhaustion has come in lately because creative exhaustion is different than physical exhaustion, but them together is where I really have a hard time staying 100%. Um, obviously, I'm grateful for every order I get and I try to pack it as quickly as I can, but there's so much other thought that goes behind like, the outfits, how I style them, all the pieces. Like I don't just, I, I refuse to buy just anything, especially now. I feel like I'm getting more and more serious with the pieces that I buy and the pieces I put in these collections. I want them to tell a story. Um, but the planning and the research, cause I do think I, I like research. That is my passion, like truly behind the 50 states. So I am excited to get somebody who can help me with that. When are you going to take Savvy K out of the house and to a warehouse? This is a fun question. Obviously my goal is to eventually be out of my house. I don't want some huge warehouse with tons of employees, but I would love to be out of my house, maybe employ people close to me. Um, that is tricky because the 50 states right now, the travel, that's my overhead. So what I'm spending on these photo shoots is what people are spending a month's rent, you know, owning a boutique. Well, actually, I'm probably spending less than rent on like industrial spaces because it is very expensive even where I live and I live in a lower I live in a lower cost part of um Florida, like I live outside of Sarasota. And where I we I live where I live now so I can have a house with extra space because anywhere else like for the price of my house could only get an apartment if we grow a lot more and it just comes to that point where i can't do it in my house anymore i will look at my options and i will kind of see what's the best option for me um there is a possibility me and my boyfriend are kind of in a weird limbo in our lives where 
Um, we do think we are possibly going to invest in buying a house soon. So I'd also like to see what area we end up in because I don't know if we'll live in the county we live in right now, but we may move to the county over. Um, if we stayed in the county I'm in now, we could possibly afford like a double lot. So like a lot of the people that live by me own the lot next to them. So they have a double lot because um, it's just very inexpensive to buy the lot next to you. Um, we have talked about building a unattached little warehouse if we had property to do that on. Um, if we don't, no big deal. But we have thought about possibly building our own if we invested in a place that had the right property. Because there's a lot of houses near me that have like huge boat storages next to. So we would kind of do something like that. Like it would be a huge... Well, not huge it'd be a like a like a boat storage or rv garage like my neighbors in the back they have a unattached garage that's just now it's hot in florida so it would have to have some sort of cooling like heat and cooling in it or air i can't just have something with no ac i would quite literally like pass away i think i have to see kind of where life takes us in the next year and then maybe reevaluate then but as of right now, I'm keeping my inventory levels at what I think I can properly manage without going insane in my house. I'm upping my inventory levels slowly, not crazily, because I want to be able to house from time to time get complaints that a lot of things sell out quickly. One, I'm just getting used to my growth and like what I need. Two, I only have so high of an amount of money to purchase so sometimes i can't keep up with my demand because for a business owner um i do not have a high credit limit i've talked about that a couple times i have a credit card that i use to buy my inventory and i pay it off literally like once twice a month like the full thing like i rack it up pay it off rack it up pay it off and you kind of have to get creative and sometimes timing doesn't line up on certain things and it's tough so i'm trying to stock up as much as I can while also being confident that I can properly store it. My guest room, we're either going to turn that into like more storage for inventory um, or I may add another wall in my current office like by the window. Would you ever want to have an in-person store? Probably not. I'll be totally honest. Like I said, I am an introvert. I'm not great at talking to people like at the pop-up shop I did I feel like I was just so awkward someone was like how much is this and I would just want to be like oh just take it I don't think I'm cut out for retail um that is my answer on that I don't think pop-up shops or an in-person store is personally my thing I would rather focus my energy creatively it could change anything could change what says so what's your favorite color my favorite color is orange of all time i don't foresee that ever changing my favorite color is by far orange when is washington on the docket for the trip washington i would i would kind of like a rainy maybe fall i don't know when the best time is for washington i do think i want that kind of muted twilight vibe i'll be honest um that's probably the vibe like i do kind of want it to be gloomy moody um so let me know if you're in washington when the best time of year is for that i imagine it's like fall or spring maybe maybe like early spring it's still kind of gloom i didn't know my camera had a maximum recording time did my thing like zoom in oh, i just realized i have those ugly ups things right there sorry i want to cut my hair like yours but i'm terrified worth it or not i'll be so honest about the reason i decided to cut my hair i feel like a huge issue early on in savvy hey boutique photo shoots was my hair I knew I needed something more manageable. I have straight hair. So when it was long and I like wanted it curled, it would fall. It would look horrible. Short for me was more manageable, but I have to say, one of the reasons I did cut it was to be more manageable for photo shoots. Like 100,020%, that is the reason. Um, I did cut it, I was like, this is me. I feel like this is the most me hair, uh, personally. And I don't know when I'll grow it out. I just feel like it's me like even like on my wedding day or something I feel like everyone wants to have the hair they feel most like themselves for me it'll be short this one's kind of funny because I don't know how do you stay organized with tasks do you use an agenda or calendar app I do not 
I use my brain, which is a really toxic trait of mine. I need to be more organized. Um, the way I stay organized is I always have a post, post it pad next to me. And if I need to remember to send a replacement to somebody, I write it on the post note and stick it on the front of my computer because I know that's the only thing that's going to remind me to actually do it. I'm a post it note in front of me person. I'm not an agenda person. I'm not a Google Calendar person, but um, if you guys follow all things Lillian, I love her. I just bought, she has like a social media content creator little agenda pad. And since my sister is coming, I was like, I feel like that could be helpful for her to maybe see what I want to accomplish that day. I'm going to put it on the screen what I got, but it like on the, on the pad, it says like to edit, to film, to post. I feel like that would be a really great um, thing for me to start doing, especially with TikToks, because at the end of the day, TikToks are a huge reason my business is successful, but it's also a huge task alongside just running a business in general. Let me do two more and I feel like I've yapped enough. I use the Tezza app. I use the filter Coco. I turn down the exposure a little because I like it to be a little bit darker. Um, I make myself look the slightest bit tanner and sometimes I'll add some grain, but that's about it. All of my photos have the same exact filter. I find that that's the best way to get a feed that flows. Um, I used to struggle with having like a good feed. I used to be so insecure about my Instagram feed and I'd be like, oh, it's so embarrassing looking. Um, but I feel like ever since I just picked a filter, stuck with it. Um, and I find that that one doesn't look overly edited. There's some filters. Like, everyone uses vintage. I find that that one can look overly edited or very orange on the skin. So I try to avoid those. Would you consider using a few of your followers as models for the 50 states drops? Okay. Here is my current stance on that. That is tough. Because... I, when we go on these photo shoots, I, I wish I could explain how chaotic they are. Um, it's definitely not as glamorous as it looks to be. It's very like onto the next, like, so that's kind of why I like to put that pressure on myself. So I'd hate to put that pressure on somebody else because we don't always have a ton of time. Like I don't have I don't have this professional production where it would be like, I'm sure you guys would find it exciting. Um, I just find it to be, I have like a method and a checklist and I just go back to back to back. I put on this outfit, I make the TikTok, I do the montage. I tell my sister we're gonna go here, she's gonna take videos of me running. It's just like the most effective and efficient for me to do it right now until I had the budget to like have a really professional production with help. Um, but right now I don't have any other models because I just have it down pat like literally i just go bing 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 change bing 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 change bing 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 change yeah if that makes any sense so in the future i would love to again like i talked about earlier when i move into like a different phase of my life where maybe i was designing and i wasn't the face hi hi i'm filming my q a oh well um What are they? So pink and gray. Do you think this is pink and gray? Yeah. Do you think it's, do you think Those are green. Pink? Yeah. She wants to be me. You think I should get a seven out of six, right? Try it on your foot because New Balance can run big. $4. Oh my god. Yeah, just get her that. I forgot to get like a bow to put on the kayak box. Oh, you need to get one. Oh yeah, if you could. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk in with just my card and kind of pretend like I don't have like a real gift. And then maybe I'll have you guys come out to my car like I need to show you something. It's not hard to like bring in and I'm not gonna wrap it. So we'll just open my trunk. Why aren't you gonna wrap it? It's giant, Savannah. We don't have an oar though. We have to go to the store and get an oar. Uh, okay. It didn't come with an oar? No, I guess not. For a thousand dollars, the kayak doesn't come with an oar. Love you. Love you, bye. Bye. Um, sorry about that. I feel like I've talked enough. Okay, I'll end off on this one question. What do you do that helps you feel confident when going out? So I feel like everybody is different what makes them feel confident. I feel like my family is very like low maintenance. Um, but I found that there's things that I feel better doing like it's definitely not a normal thing in my family to like put makeup on before you leave the house or like 
even do a bunch of stuff to your hair or put on a real outfit like first thing in the morning so for a long time i felt like that was wrong at the end of the day there are certain things that make you feel good so like if i get up for the day i immediately have to get out of my pajamas that's something that makes me feel better i go ahead and brush my hair i do some makeup or some skincare that makes me feel like i have makeup on because i just know i'll feel better about it if i just do it um i used to feel like bad that i feel like i needed to do those things that they were wrong but the key for me is to just do the things that make you feel good like this video it's just a saturday but i was like i'm just gonna do makeup for fun i'm gonna watch a tv show put makeup on and i'm gonna feel better about the video i don't think i need to have those things i'm actually fairly confident without makeup on um but there are certain things do what you think makes you feel better um when it comes to like my workout stuff i even if i don't feel like working out i'll put a workout outfit on and i know probably at some point in the day i will feel good enough to just go ahead and do the workout that's kind of different but i feel like it goes hand in hand to just do the things you know makes you feel better to have like a better more productive day a lot of people say do two of three things so either do your hair put on a cute outfit wear some sweats but do your hair and makeup um do your makeup put on a cute outfit leave your hair kind of messy i feel like that's so true pick like two or three things um i've found myself wanting to put together cuter outfits and maybe do more makeup just to i don't know just as a confidence thing yeah that's it i think i'm going to vlog my sister's room makeover in the beginning of this week so expect to see a little room flip um next sunday and yeah let me know any of your thoughts you had on some questions if you have any other questions my boyfriend said that he would maybe do a q a with me at some point and then maybe i can have my sister do a q a with me too maybe they can do a who knows me better that would be very interesting that would be pretty competitive i feel like so let me know what videos you want to see Maynard, are you gonna come say hi come here up Mater. up Turn around you say bye say see you guys next sunday love you bye mm -hmm.